Welcome to the IDS 125 Dihydroxy Vitamin D RIA Instructional DVD, helping you to get the best out of your assay. Preparation of reagents, controls and wash solution. Allow all reagents to come up to room temperature before use. This is between 18 and 25 degrees Celsius. Reconstitute controls immediately before use. To prepare the controls, pipette 1.2 milliliters of distilled or deionized water into each vial. Replace the stoppers and leave for 15 to 20 minutes to reconstitute. Invert several times to ensure complete reconstitution. If controls are to be used more than once, freeze within 15 minutes of reconstitution at minus 20 degrees Celsius. When reusing frozen controls, thaw at room temperature, mix well and use within 15 minutes. Wash solution. Add the contents of the wash concentrate to 475 milliliters of distilled or deionized water. Mix well by inversion. The calibrators are not prepared at this point. Sample preparation. Step 1. Prepare labelled glass or plastic tubes, one for each control and sample. Do not label tubes for the calibrators. Step 2. Add 500 microliters of each control or vortexed sample to appropriately labelled tubes. Step 3. Add 50 microliters of delipidation reagent to each tube. Vortex all tubes. Step 4. Centrifuge all tubes at 2000 G for 30 minutes. Immuno extraction procedure. Step 1. Prepare labeled immuno capsules, two for each control and sample. Do not label immunocapsules for calibrators. Step 2. Vortex immunocapsules and allow the solid phase to settle. Stand immunocapsules upright in the foam rack for 3 to 5 minutes. After centrifugation, the supernatant of the sample must be clear. When handling delipidated samples, take care not to disturb the pellet. If the pellet becomes disturbed or the sample is cloudy, repeat the centrifugation. Step 3. 
remove screw caps from immunocapsules and add 100 microliters of delipidated sample or control to immunocapsules in duplicate. Replace caps securely. Invert foam to ensure gel is in suspension. Step 4. Place immunocapsules in foam rack and rotate end over end at 5 to 20 revolutions per minute. Foam racks can be easily attached to a blood tube rotator by means of the cutout slots. Alternatively, the foam rack may be wedged inside a suitable beaker and rotated on a bottle roller. Incubate for 3 hours at room temperature, which is between 18 and 25 degrees C. Step 5. Stand immunocapsules upright in foam rack for 3 to 5 minutes to allow gel to settle. Tap to dislodge any gel adhering to the screw caps. Allow gel to settle for a further 1 to 2 minutes. Remove screw cap and break off the bottom stopper. Do not twist off the bottom stopper from immunocapsules as this may damage the immunocapsule. Place each immunocapsule in a glass or plastic tube. Centrifuge at low speed between 500 and 1000 G for approximately one minute to remove the sample waste. Step 6. Add 500 microliters of diluted wash solution to each immunocapsule. Add carefully to avoid the solid phase splashing out of the immunocapsule. This is best done by pipetting around the inside edge of the immunocapsule, as shown. Centrifuge at between 500 and 1000 G for one minute. Step 7. Repeat the previous wash step once more and centrifuge again at between 500 and 1000 G for one minute. Step 8. Prepare labelled borosilicate glass tubes, one for each immunocapsule, and transfer the immunocapsules to the glass tubes. Tubes must be borosilicate. Step 9. Add 150 microliters of elution reagent to all immunocapsules using the same technique as for the wash. Allow reagent to soak into solid phase for one to two minutes. Centrifuge at low speed between 500 and 1000 G for approximately one minute to collect the eluate. Step 10. Repeat step nine a further two times. The total elution volume is 450 microliters for each sample.
Step 11. Discard the amino capsules. Place tubes in heating block or water bath set to 30 degrees Celsius. Evaporate the eluates under a gentle flow of nitrogen. Probes must be above the eluents by one inch. Evaporation should take 20 to 30 minutes. Once evaporation is complete, this should leave a white residue of buffer salts inside the tubes. Ensure the tubes are dry. Step 12. Add 100 microliters of assay buffer to each tube and vortex to dissolve the residues. Do this immediately as the 125 dihydroxy vitamin D may oxidize if left exposed to oxygen. The immunopurified samples are now ready for assay. Assay procedure. Step 1. Reconstitute calibrators immediately before use. Add 1 milliliter of distilled or deionized water to each vial and replace lids. Wait for five minutes to ensure calibrators are fully reconstituted. While waiting, prepare labelled borosilicate glass tubes, one for each calibrator, two as non-specific binding, NSP tubes, and two as total count, TC tubes. Invert calibrator vials several times to ensure a homogeneous solution. If calibrators are to be used again, refreeze at minus 20 degrees C within 15 minutes of reconstitution. When defrosted, use within 15 minutes of thawing. Do not refreeze a second time. Pipette 100 microliters of each calibrator into the relevant duplicate tubes. Ensure calibrators are pipetted to the bottom of the tubes and not down the sides. Add 300 microliters of assay buffer to each NSB tube. Step 2. Assemble all tubes together. Sample and control tubes that have gone through extraction procedure and calibrated tubes. Step 3. Add 200 microliters of primary antibody to all tubes except total count and NSB tubes. Step 4. Vortex all tubes and incubate between 2 and 8 degrees C for 16 to 18 hours.
Step 5. Remove tracer from the fridge and allow to reach room temperature by leaving on the laboratory bench for at least half an hour. While waiting, set up a water bath, at least deep enough to incubate reagents within the tubes. Set the water bath to between 18 and 25 degrees Celsius. Set timer for one hour. Remove tubes from fridge. Immediately add 200 microliters of room temperature tracer to all the tubes. Remember to start timer on addition of tracer to the first tube. This will ensure that incubation time is exactly one hour. It's important to start the timer immediately upon addition of tracer to the first tube. Vortex tubes gently and place in water bath. While waiting, bring the sac cell to room temperature by placing on the laboratory bench for one hour during tracer incubation. Step 6 Mix sac cell well to resuspend before and during use. When time is up, remove tubes from the water bath, dry, and add 100 microliters of resuspended sac cell to all tubes except for the total counts. Vortex the tubes gently and incubate at room temperature for 30 minutes. Step 7 Add 4 milliliters of wash solution to all tubes except for total count tubes. Centrifuge all tubes, except for total count tubes, at 2000 G for 20 minutes. Step 8. Racks with tube retainers are ideal for the decant stage. Unload tubes from the centrifuge into a rack with a retainer. Decant supernatant by smoothly and carefully inverting the tube rack. This must be done once only, to avoid resuspending the pellet. Immediately place the tubes to drain on a pad of absorbent paper. Wait for one to two minutes and blot the rims to remove the remaining drops of fluid. Smoothly turn tubes the right way up and prepare to re- Step 9. Count the tubes in a suitable gamma counter for at least one minute. Calculate percentage binding of each calibrator, control or sample by following this equation. Prepare a calibration curve on semi-log graph paper, plotting B over B0 against 125D concentration and read the concentration samples from the curve. Alternatively, use an appropriate data reduction technique, smoothed spline or 4PL curve fits. <laughs>